All right, now we're going to talk about simplifying radical expressions. So on this one right here, we have um, just a regular square root. All right, so when they're asking us to simplify each radical expression, we're going to do what we've done in the past, which is we're going to break this 48 down into... We're going to factor that 48 using a factoring tree. And remember what I told you, for, for this one right here, you might want to break it down all the way. I'm just trying to make a point here. All right, so we have 2 and 2 here, and this is uh, 4 and 3, and this is 2 and 2. So in a square root, we're actually looking for pairs. So in this case, we have two pairs of 2. So essentially what you have is you have 2 times 2, and then whatever is left over, which in this case is that 3, you would have it right here. All right, so one of these twos came from here. One of these twos right here came from over here. Okay, so therefore the answer is four squared to three. So again, we have done that in the past, so hopefully that's not too new to you. Now, the next few problems are gonna be the same idea. All right, they're gonna be exactly the same idea. So we're just gonna expand the knowledge we already have. So 64, if you break that down into its factors, into its prime factors, you would have like 2 and 32, and I know I'm writing really small, by the way, I'm sorry. 2 and 16, 2 and 8, 2 and 4, and then 4 is 2 and 2. All right, so turns out that 64 is, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 is 2 multiplied times itself 6 times. So when we have the fifth root, and that's how you'd say that, the fifth root is 64, what I'm really looking for is I'm looking for groups of five. So instead of looking for pairs, I'm looking for groups of five. So in this case, if you look at it, I have one big group of five right here. All right, so therefore, all of these are gonna form this one. So I have two fifth roots of whatever I have left, which in this case is two. Okay, so that's how you do that one. We're on an 18, same idea. Now we're taking, again, a square root, so but we have a variable with it, all right? So 18, we can break that down into nine and two, and nine is three and three. So there we have a pair of threes, right? So this would be three. And now m cubed, essentially what I'm asking you, if you have m cubed, right, I'm gonna draw the factor entry here. m cubed is m times m times m, right? It's m times itself three times. And in this case, I have a pair of m's, so therefore one of those m's comes out of the, out of the radicand. And then whatever I have left over, in this case, I have left over a 2m in, inside of here, okay? So I have a 2m left over, and that will be the answer. Again, what I'm left over is with the 2 and that m. So essentially that's what we're doing with number, uh, well, this number 4, example number 4. So in this one, we're looking for the fourth root. So we're going to break down that 32 into its prime factors. And in this case, you would have like 2 and 16, uh, 2 and 8. You know, 8 is 2 and 4. 4 is 2 and 2. All right, so notice that on this one, we have a group of 4 right here. Right, and an x to the 6, instead of looking for pairs here, we're going to look for, because it's a fourth root, we're going to look for groups of four. And if you think about it, I'm going to write it one time, but I'm not going to write it all the time. x to the six is x times x times x times x. It's x times itself, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, six times. So it's x times itself six times. So I'm asking you, uh, circle the group of four. Or how many groups of four do I have? And I only have one group of four for the x's, all right? So my answer would be 2x, and whatever I have left over, in this case I have two, and what's left over is this two x's right here, so x squared. So the way that I like to do this normally is I say, okay, how many groups of four do I have in six? Well, the answer is only one group, so I only take one x out. And how many do I have left over? Well, I have two, so this is basically like dividing. This will be the remainder, okay? All right, so let's go to number three. All right, number three, uh, 64, negative 64 would be negative four 
times itself, three times. And some of these you might want to know, right? Like I know that the cube root of 64 is uh, 4. So in this case, notice that you have a group of 3, so that's done with that. And I'm going to ask you this again, or I don't want to keep just writing 6 A's and 7 B's. Like how many groups of 3 do I have in 6? In this case, I have 2 groups. So this would be A squared. Okay? And then now I'm going to ask you, how many groups of 3 do I have in B to the 7th? So in B to the 7th, I have two groups of 3. And I have one of those B's left over. So that, that's where the power of 1 comes from right there. All right, so again, this is a cube root. Okay, so again, what I'm going to do it one more time. I said that I wouldn't, but I will. B to the 7th. And if you already know this, if you kind of understood what I was saying, then you can probably just move on. All right, so fast forward through this part. B to the seventh is B times itself uh, seven times. All right, so groups of three. So how many groups of three do I have? And I'm picking groups of three because I have a cube root. I have two groups of B. So each one of these groups, you can take out a B, and then you have B squared. So that's where that B squared came from. Okay, so let's go to number six now. Uh, I'm looking for the fifth root of negative 32. Now, on negative 32, remember this does not have an I, does not have an imaginary. Uh, you only, you're only going to get imaginaries, possibly, if you have a negative inside the radical, obviously, but this one would have to be, have an even, um, you have to have an even power here. So if I were taking the fourth root, or the sixth root, or the eighth root, then you can get imaginary roots. But when it comes to odd roots, Odd roots, you will not have an imaginary. Okay, so anyway, the cube, the fifth root of 32, notice that I, I broke down 32 here. You have five of them. So actually, the, the fifth root of 32 is just two. And I'm going to ask you, how many groups of five do I have in x to the fifth? I have one. All right, so x to the first, that's when I say one. That's what I mean. All right, how many groups of five do I have in y to the tenth? I have two. All right, so this would be y squared. There's nothing left over, so that's the answer. All right, on number seven, um, let's see. This is a negative, and I'm, I'm not really sure why they put this example, but the fourth root of 256, I am almost certain, is four, but let me actually check that out. I'm not 100% sure that that's true, so let's see. <laughs> Give me just a second here. Yeah, okay, so that's four. So don't worry too much about that one. I mean, if we're going to ask you not to use a calculator, more than likely we're not going to ask you something like this. Can't make any promises, but otherwise you would have to break that down into its prime factors, which is not terrible, but definitely time-consuming. All right, on this one, now we're going to talk about multiplying and dividing radicals. All right, so if we're going to multiply a radical, actually multiplying is a whole lot better than adding, and you're going to see why. So when you multiply these two radicals, what you have to do is just multiply the outside numbers, the numbers that are outside the radical. So we have um, 5 times 3, which is 15. Okay. And then we have 28 times 4. Now, notice that I didn't actually multiply that out because what you're going to have to do at the same time is you're going to have to simplify this radical. So instead of multiplying those two, see if you can break those down into factors so you can actually simplify this. Now, on 24, I know that 24 is 8 times 3. Okay? So notice that 24 times 8 is 8 times 3 times 8. Okay? So I have a pair of 8s here. So that's going to come out. So I have 15 times 8. And whatever I have left over is 3. So let's see, that's 40... That's 120 square root of 3. Okay. All right. Uh, on this part right here, this is actually a little bit easier. So you have these rules over here that tell you that this is the same. All right. So if you have the same radical, meaning like this has to be the same root, you can actually multiply them, which is what we did here. And right here, this is either or. It goes both ways. So when you have something like this, if I could... If I knew the cube root of 48, I would go ahead and do it, but I don't. And I don't know the cube root of 2, but what I can do is I can do this. I can put all of that under the same radical. So now the cube root of 48 over 2. Well, I can divide that first. So I have the cube root of 24. Then I can break down that 24. All right, 24 
is, uh, let's see, 2 and 12. And we have 2 and 6. And then we got 2 and 3. Okay, so therefore, see how many groups of 3 do I have? I have 1. All right, so this would be 2. Uh, let's see, 2 cube roots of 3. That would be the answer here. Okay? All right. Now, on number four, uh, same idea, all right? I'm going to go ahead and multiply those two. Notice that I'm talking about the fourth root, so I can actually multiply the insides. So on this, I'm going to have eight and four, and I'm not going to multiply it until I break those down into its prime factors, because then I'm doing more work than I need to, all right? So eight squared and eight to the fourth, that'll be eight to the sixth. Remember, we're going to multiply those two, which means I'm going to add those two uh, exponents b to the 5th times b to the 10th, that's b to the 15th. All right, now let's break these down. So we have, let's see, 2 and 2 is right here. Uh, this one is 2 times 2 times 2, right? How many groups of 4 do I have? I have one group of 2, so that comes out. Then now this is the easy part. How many groups of 4 do I have in a to the 6th? I have one group of one group of 4, All right? So that's a to the 1st. What do I have left over? Well, let's, let me write it over here. Leave yourself a little space here so you can kind of do it at the same time. First of all, I have a 2 left over. On the A, again, how many groups of 4 do I have in A to the 6? I have 1, and I have 2 A's left over. So that's what I'm going to write there. Right on B, how many groups of 4 do I have in B to the 15th? Well, I guess I have 3, right? So this would be B cubed because 4 times 3 is 12, right? So if I have three groups of 4, how many b's do I have left over? Well, I would have three left over, so that would be it for that. Okay, so now this is simplified, this will be a, your answer right here. All right, on this one right here, yes, you can, uh, you can try to divide that, but that's not gonna be an, uh, a whole number. So what I, on this one, you can also go backwards. So if you have this, Sometimes it might be easier to do this, and you just have to use your discretion and some logic to figure that out, because I know what the square root of 27 is, which is 3, and I know what the square root of 8 is, which is 2. So this is much easier if you do it like that, okay? So we're going to go ahead and move on. So, all right, on this one right here, we're going to add, and we can only add, we can only add, we can only add these if you have the same radical uh, on these, all right? So these you are able to add, so all you do is you're, you're just adding 2 plus 3 square roots of 3, which is just 5. So you could have probably done that without writing this step that I wrote there. So essentially this is like like terms, right? If I ask you how many square roots of 3 do I have? Well, I have 2 here and I have 3 here, so that's 5. All right, on number two, you might be looking at it like, well, they don't have the same thing inside the radical, all right? They're not the same radical, so therefore, I don't, I can't add them. Well, kind of, all right? You actually have to simplify before you make that decision. So we're going to have to simplify those radicals right here. And remember that I'm going to do this a little bit faster, otherwise it's going to take forever. But if you simplify this radical, I know that 50 is 25 times 2, and then 25 is 5 times 5, all right? So this 2 is going to, this 5, excuse me, is going to come out, and I'm going to end up with a 2 inside. Now, on 80, I know that 80 is 16 times 5. And again, you can break this down into its uh, prime factors, if you like, and then figure this out on your own. All right, so 16 times 5 means that I'm going to have a 4 on the outside, a 5 on the inside. All right, so remember, 16 is 4 times 4. That's where that 4 came from. All right, now, on this one, 125, I know that's 25 times 5. So therefore, that 25 can be broken down into 5 and 5, right? So this is going to be 5, and I'm going to have a 5 left over. So this would be 10 square roots of 2, minus 4 square roots of 5. So that one didn't change, and this one's going to be 15 square roots of 5. I'm going to add like terms. Now, the only like terms that I have is this and this. So I'm just going to have to rewrite this one. And then add those two, which will give you negative 4 plus 15 is 11 square roots of 5. So that's it. that's it for that one. Okay? Now moving on to uh, this example right here. Now in this example, 
is going to be the same idea. Now, remember, if you get it, just go ahead and fast forward through this part. All right. So 80, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that that's going to be, notice that I'm looking for uh, fourth roots here. All right. So on the fourth roots, that means you're going to have to break this down, really, into uh, uh, factors where you have four. Remember, 80 for me was 16, uh, 16 and 5. And this is 4 and 4. And this one's 2 and 2. Anyways, you have one group of two there. So this would be 12 times 2. And whatever I have left over, in this case, I have a 5 left over. So that's 24, the 4th root of 5th. Excuse me, the 4th root of 5. And on this one right here, well, that 5 cannot be broken down. So I can go ahead and just add this to it. Notice that I have the same radical here, meaning I have the same index, I have the same radicand, so uh, I can go ahead and add those. So this would be, let's see, 2018, that's 32, that would be 42, 42, 4 through, so 5. All right, I'm not going to do this one, but similarly, you can do the same thing. Just break this down until you have uh, your prime factors and then look for groups of three and then hopefully you're going to have the same thing and I think if I've done this correctly which is questionable you should get this so try that one out just to give yourself a little confidence all right now let's go ahead go ahead and move on to the back of your notes or to your next uh, page of notes and this one should be a little bit easier it's not quite as tedious now on this part right here you have a, a definition here that says that if you have some number raised to some uh, rational exponent, meaning some fraction, uh, some power that's written as a fraction, you can rewrite it like this or like that. Okay, so let me just go ahead and jump straight to the example. So notice that even though we never actually write a square root like this, a square root is technically that. Okay, so to rewrite that as a rational, as a fraction, you would just write it as x, excuse me, 8 to the 1 half power. Right, on number 2, uh, this is the this is the thing to note about this. Okay, so I kind of talk about this. The top part is always going to be the power, and the bottom part is always going to be the root. So if that helps you, that that might be the way to do it. All right. So again, the top part is the power, the bottom part is the root. So on this one, remember this outside part is going to be the root. So this is going to be five to the power of the bottom is three, and this is the power. So this is eight. Okay. So that's eight thirds. So same thing on this one is just written backwards. So again, this is the fourth root of 3x. So I can write 3x with a raised to the power of 4, 3 over 4. All right, again, that's the power, that's the root. So you always put the power on top, and you always put the root on the bottom. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and go to the next few examples here. Now we're going to rewrite this as a radical expression. 4 to the 1 fifth can be written as the fifth root of 4. If we have this, and this is, honestly, I think this is more important than that. So 16, you can write it two ways. You can write it as the cube root, because remember, this bottom part of the fraction is a root. That's the power, right? Is the cube root of 16 to the fifth power. You can write it like that. Or you can write it as, um, you can write it as a cube root of 16 raised to the fifth power and honestly this is actually easier for you to do in your head or without a calculator which is where you're going to have to do eventually all right so on this one right here we have the four is the root the three is the power so again same idea you can either write it as this right here and with the fourth root on the outside or you can write it as the fourth root of all that stuff raised to the third power. So either or. All right. It turns out that without a calculator, this is a better way to do it. Uh, even though that you really can't do anything with that. All right. So in this one, we're supposed to evaluate this without using a calculator. Notice that this right here. Remember what I said. The bottom part is a root. So we have the square root of four. You can put a two there if you want to, although we normally don't. We're gonna raise this to the third power. Okay. So now the f uh, square root of four is two, and two to the third is 8 okay now I want to show you that it is the same okay so it is the same if you don't know if you do it the other way 
even though it's harder to do like that, but uh, you would have four square and then the square root of that. Um, excuse me, four to the third power and then the square root of that. So four to the third power is 64 and the square root of 64 is eight. All right, so no matter how you do it, you're supposed to get the same answer, but it's always easier to write it like that, okay? Now on number eight, we have, remember a negative exponent means we're gonna put this on the bottom of a fraction. And that just means this is the square root of nine. Now the square root of nine is just three, so this is gonna be one third. Now on number nine, same thing, remember the bottom is a root. So I'm always wanna, I always wanna start with that because this turns out to be easier if I do it like this, right? I don't have to uh, square the eight and then take the cube root. I think that's harder for you. Now the cube root of eight is two. And if I square that, I get a four, all right? Let's go to number 10. Now, number 10, remember we have a negative exponent, which means we're going to put this on the bottom. I have three fifths here. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and take the fifth root. So I'm going to write it as one over the fifth root of 32 raised to the third power. Now, I know you might be thinking, well, I don't know what the fifth root is. Uh, you have done this before. It turns out that if you break 32 into its prime factors, you get 5, 2. So this actually has an even root. So you have the fifth root of 32 is 2. And if you raise that to the third, I have 1 over 2 to the third, which is 1 over 8. Okay? So again, you're supposed to do this without a calculator, and we will uh, quiz you and test you over that. All right, so now we're going to use the loss of exponents, which we learned in the, in the last video. But the only difference now is that we have fractions. So I'm going to go through this pretty fast. Remember, if you multiply, you add. So you have 5. If you remember, if you don't remember how to add fractions, you're just adding the, the numerators, which is 4, and keep the denominator the same. Otherwise, you can't really add it anyway. So this is just 5. 5 to the first power is just 5, OK? Now, on number 12, if we have a power raised to a power, we're going to multiply. So this is 6 over 2. This is b 12 over 3. Again, please notice that I'm just multiplying that number times the numerator, and that number times the numerator, and then reducing. Reducing the fraction or divide if you can. In this case, you can. So this is a cubed b to the fourth. OK. Let's see, on 13, let's see, we have 27 to the 1 third. One third times six, that'll be the same thing as multiplying six, or excuse me, six times one is six divided by three is two, so this is c squared. And then one third times negative three is d to the negative one. All right, so 27 to the one third is the same thing. Remember, we just learned that as the cube root of 27, which is three. This is c squared, and this d is going to go on the bottom of this. All right, uh, let's see how much of this I actually want to do. All right, I'll. I'll do this this one right here too. So on this one we have eight to the two thirds. Now eight to the two eight to the twelve raised to the two thirds power. Are you gonna multiply that? Now if I multiply that, I get twenty-four over three, and you can probably do this faster in your head, hopefully. This is b to the power of eighteen over three. Alright, now remember that this is this is the cube root of 8 raised to the second power. And this is a, let's see, 8 to the 8th. 27, that would be 27, the cube root of 27 raised to the second power. And this right here would be b to the 6th. Right? Again, I'm just dividing here. Now this right here, remember, you're supposed to do it without a calculator, so the cube root of 8 is 2, and 2 squared is 4, so this would be 4, 8 to the 8th, and on this one, the cube root of 27 is 3, and 3 squared is 9, so this would be 9b6. All right, hopefully you can do this one on your own. All you're doing is adding like terms, okay? And then, I guess, finally, on this one, I'll do this one. Uh, Remember, number with number, right? So either reduce or divide that. In this case, I have a negative one half. And in this case, I don't know how you want to do it. Maybe this is hard for you to tell what's going on here. But remember, if I divide, I'm supposed to subtract the powers. Right? And in this case, I would have a negative one half, a to the negative six over seven. And remember, this negative one, that 
that doesn't get flipped around or anything, right? Only the, the ones that has a negative exponent is going to go to the bottom of a fraction. So please do not get that confused. So this would be the answer for that, right? I know this is a long video. I hope you skip through some of it. Uh, hopefully good luck tomorrow.